Today we've been asked to solve two equations by factoring. Uh, the first equation, 5x squared plus 12x plus 4 equals 0. So we say, okay, well, the first thing we need to do is simply write the factors of the leading term and the number. And the factors of 4 are 4 and 1 or 2 and 2. And the factors of 5x squared are 5x and x. And the rule here is real simple. These numbers have to multiply to give you this. These numbers have to multiply to give you this. And then the product of these numbers here and here have to add up to give you 12. And what I know is 5 times 2 is 10 and 1 times 2 is 2 and 10 and 2 make 12. So I have to pair them in such a way that that's how they multiply. And of course in this situation it doesn't matter um, because they're the same factor. So this will be plus 2 and plus 2 and that equals 0. Okay, so now we have factored the problem. And if the problem said to factor and stop, we would be finished. But they didn't ask us to factor, they asked us to solve. And there's a fun little property in mathematics called the zero property. And it basically states that zero times any number, and I like to say, you know, zero times a equals zero. Zero times a equals zero. Now, what we're looking for is what number will make this statement true. Well, any number that makes this 0, anything times 0 will equal 0. So what we do is we set each statement equal to 0. So 5x plus 2 equals 0. Now, whatever number will make this statement true, 0 times anything equals 0. Whatever statement, whatever number makes this statement true, 0 times anything equals 0. Okay? Well, this one's the easy one. Move this 2 over and you get x equals negative 2. Well, that's, that makes perfect sense to me because I know negative 2 plus 2 equals 0. Here, move the 2 over. You get 5x equals negative 2. And then you divide both sides by 5 and you get x equals negative 2 fifths. Okay? So that number and that number make this statement true. And since this statement is a factored version of this statement, these numbers make this statement true. And those are the solutions to that equation. Let's try a different one. Here we have 3x squared minus 2x minus 5. Now, because this is negative, the factors of 5 normally are 1 and 5. However, one of them, negative 1 times 5, makes negative 5. One of them has to be negative, so I could also have this factor. Okay? And, of course, the factors of 3, real simple, 3x and x. Well, 3 and negative 1 make negative 3. x and 5 make 5x. What is 5x minus 3x? It's positive 2. That doesn't work. So let's try it the other way. What's 3 times 1? 3. 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. What's 3 minus 5? Ta-da! Negative 2. So we have to write these so that they multiply that way. Well, you have to remember how you multiply polynomials. This factor is going to be multiplied by this number. Well, I know I need 3 times 1, so guess what I'm going to put here? And I also know I need x times negative 5. Well, x times, ta-da, negative 5. And that's just a kind of a quick review on factoring here. Once you get this factored again, we use the zero property. If this equals zero, zero times anything makes this a true statement. So we set this equal to zero, and we set this equal to zero. 
So this gives us x equals negative 1. Simple answer. Here, move the 5 over. You get 3x equals 5. x equals 5 thirds. So those two answers will make the original problem a true statement. And I always like to plug in one of these. So take this negative 1. Uh, negative 1 squared is 1, and 3 times 1 is 3. So we get 3. Uh, negative 2 times negative 1 is plus 2, and then minus 5. Well, 3 plus 2 is 5, and 5 minus 5 equals 0. 0 equals 0. Well, that's a true statement, so this answer must be correct. And you could also plug in this fractional answer and check it as well, although it's a little harder because it's a nice, ugly fraction. If you have any questions, please come see me.